now, Brandon Thick Boy Shop. Hey, oh, Akuna Matata. It's August 5th. It is Monday morning. Monday morning. Kiddos are watching, they're watching Lion King this morning before they went off to summer camp. Akuna Matata. That movie is wild when you think about it. Uh, Simba father died, and then he stumbles upon a, a warthog. When I was a young warthog, a warthog and that little like rat thing, and then all oh, your dad died, Akuna Matata. Just forget about it, man. Eat these bugs. You're like, this is dark. They didn't give a fuck his dad died. Akuna Matata, baby. Dad died, all good. <laughs> Movie's wild. My kids get so sad when the dad dies. I'm their favorite. Uh, busy weekend, man. Busy weekend with the kiddos. Friday, went to the car show, Burbank car show. Uh, it's called Bob's Big Boy Burger. Um, if you're in Los Angeles and you're in the car scene, you've heard of this car show. And I've never been. And it's every Friday. And boy, is it every Friday. Bob's Big Boy Burgers. You guys would know, especially for those that don't live in LA, you guys would know it. Um, it was on Austin Powers. You know the the sign that goes up to space, the big boy. That's that's that restaurant. Um, what else? Oh, you know the scene in Heat between Al Pacino and Robert De Niro where they sit down. It's like one of the Jen has no clue what I'm talking about. Um, I do. You do. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, when that when it's the the bad guy and the good guy, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, the bad guy, they sit down and have a conversation, like one of the most epic scenes ever. That's at Bob's Big Burger. It's that place. The car show. I mean, for my kiddos, they appreciate uh, hot rods, but it's like old school stuff. My car was by far. The newest car within 30 years, 40 years, maybe. Which is the Demon? The de- I brought the Demon, yeah. It's a hot rod. You know, it's kind of a throwback hot rod. Sublime green, throwback to the 60s, Challenger, you know. Uh, he got some attention. He got some attention, but uh, old school stuff. And then uh, Saturday had the fights. I don't mind the afternoon fights. A little tough when kiddos are going crazy, but I get to watch most of it. And then Sunday went to the Angels game. Uh, Angels aren't very good, and Mike Trout is hurt. I should have done my homework before I went. Um, yeah, they uh, they love Mike Trout, and uh, he's out. So the Angels don't have anyone. Here's my thing with Angels: they had Mike Trout in his prime and Shohei Otani, and couldn't even get to the goddamn playoffs. The entire staff should be fired. You have the two top five best baseball players in the last 50 years in their prime and you can't get a f- sniff the playoffs how do how do heads not roll yeah mike trout hurt his knee he's out for the season one of my top three favorite players and i was hyping him up didn't do my homework the angels games aren't on here uh on in la on tv a bunch it's always the dodgers but not if you have dish they're only on spectrum drives me nuts even though i bought that mlb package way to go um and here's the thing i went on line the night before for tickets we were like four or five rows behind the dugout because uh, t plays third and pitcher so i liked him to watch the third base so i always get third base tickets and they were cheap they're like 60 bucks which Do- go look at dodger tickets because of otani tickets are so expensive and they're stacked freddie freeman all the boys right mookie Betts, all the boys they got everybody so Dodger tickets, you're looking at, you know, low six figures. It, I'm sorry, um, low. It one one ticket probably 150 up to 200, maybe 300 where I got uh, for Angel Stadium. But Angels uh, suck peepees, so they had nobody. Um, so tickets are cheap, but these tickets were extra cheap. I'm like, I'll take the kiddos to a game. They love baseball. I get there and I looked at the weather. It said 96 degrees. I'm like, that's not terrible especially stadium some shade dude that lower section if you see the picture there's nobody there for good reason it was look at he, tiger was about to pass out <laughs> bosti was <laughs> not <laughs> thrilled i put their jerseys over their head <laughs> but tiger looks like he's about to cry it was tough they and it was like top of the fourth and t's like dad i don't know if i can stay out here in the sun i was like is this bad parenting and then um, we went and got them fans. I put the jerseys over their heads. 
and they were all, all right, but it, it looked like it was going to be tough. And then um, with the, those cheap fans, you know, the fans that like blow water or whatever, they wanted those 50 bucks. That's, oh yeah, that's at, at the game, you know, it's a freaking nightmare. And you're like at the mercy of being stuck in 100 degree weather, basically. So they're hydrated, whatever, and the, with the fans embossed, you know, he's four, dude. He drops the batteries in it. So I'm on the ground looking at batteries. We've been to so many uh, MLB games. Every game, like, Dad, catch a foul bat ball. Dad, make sure you catch a foul ball. I'm like, dude, it's tough, man. They're, they don't come this way a lot. And then I'm down, like, looking for the batteries because Bossy dropped them the next seat underneath. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, like, gr grabbing underneath some dude's seat. I'm like, I'm just trying to get this battery. And I hear Bossy go, Dad, foul ball. And I'm like, what? I look up, and I see the ball, like, shh. I'm like, no, your boy, goosh, one-handed, bare-handed, left-handed, with a drink in my hand, Diet Coke, holler, save the day. Um, I don't know who hit it. I don't know if they threw it. You know, I just saw the ball in the air, man, and the dude in front of me was trying to get it, and I just freaking mossed his ass. Not today, dude. It's 100 degrees. My kid's about to freak out. Boom. And then I caught it like this, like hardcore. I mean, it was in my hand. Another dad right next to us, hands on top. And we look at each other, and he goes, ah, you can have it, man. I was like, thanks, dude. Good guy, because he caught one earlier. He goes, my son already has one. I'm like, oh, damn, look at you. Uh, it was a good time, though. Good time. I like Angel Stadium. They just don't have anybody, man. And they played the Mets, you know. You know, it is what it is. Kids just like baseball. That was a fun time. Uh, but I did get to watch the uh, the fights on Saturday in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I don't mind the uh, the afternoon card. It's kind of nice. A little tricky as a parent. Got the kids in the pool. Bossy got stung in the eye by a bee. Took it like a savage. His brother got stung walking barefoot uh I'm on our grass and there's some bee just like dude i'm just exhausted i'm gonna shut it down for a second and then a giant eight-year-old steps on the bee went oh hell no and stung him right in the foot you would have thought a werewolf ripped his leg off he was yelling and crying so loud it was insane pan a few weeks later boss yesterday gets stung in the goddamn eye like right in the corner like right in the corner took it like a savage I was like, Dad, I think I got stung by a bee. I'm like, no, keep swimming. I go inside. He's like, Dad. Yeah, finally, it's all swelled up. Few tears, but dude, pretty savage. Pretty savage. Um, so that's fun for me. It's stung in the eye. But the uh, let's get to the fights, man. So you had the fights in Abu Dhabi. Um, good card. Really good card. Really, really good card. Um, where do we want to start? I mean, you can start with... Uh, Joel Alvarez looked fantastic. Um, Mackenzie Dern, Loopy is a tough customer. Mackenzie Dern looked like she was so ready for this fight. Here's the thing about Mackenzie Dern. Um, there's a few female and male fighters who check all the boxes. We can pretend that you don't pay attention to Mackenzie Dern because uh, she's not attractive. You can pretend you didn't pay, pay attention to Paige Van Zandt a little more than some of the other fighters. We can pretend you didn't pay attention to uh, Rachel Ostevich because, you know, because of her great striking. We can pretend. And then Mackenzie Dern's an interesting one because not only does she check the box of clearly she's an attractive uh, human being, but she's also world class. And she comes from elite pedigree with her dad, uh, Megatron, also uh, Megaton. Megaton and, her, you know, Hell's Angel, whatever. I'm a fan. So Mackenzie Dern comes in with world-class credentials with her jiu-jitsu. And obviously the UFC has tried this a few times with other female fighters where they, they look, regardless of the sport, hot's hot, right? They're attractive human beings, whether they're just walking down the street in LA or they're professional fighters getting punched in the face in the UFC. So they've tried this and it hasn't really worked out. Ronda, Misha Tate, Outside that, it's a little dicey, where they check all the boxes. World-class skill, could be attractive in any genre, anywhere. And there, there's Stone Cold 10s in LA, just walking down the street. It doesn't really work out, but Mackenzie Dern, she's been up and down, so you're kind of like, ah, is it one of those again? Is it another Paige Van Zandt situation where we're tuning in because she's an attractive girl, 
but you know, never really got the world class level. Is it one of those? And then you see performance like this, you're like Jesus Christ, like that walking superstar dude. Clearly, the cameraman gets it too. If you watch the weigh-ins, he's just like mm -hmm. the other girl. She might as well not have been fighting another girl. The cameraman just. She was just like off on camera, just like zoomed in on her ass. He's like, yeah, yeah. You're like, hey, dude, class it up, bud. But uh, she looked in phenomenal shape. And, and again, she she always gets right there. And you're like, yeah, the striking is just not there. But she's back with Jason Perello, who's probably the best striking coach in the game. Mm -hmm. And now her striking's an advantage. Like, Loopy's a savage, dude. I know people are like, yeah, Loopy, dude, if you pay attention, Loopy's not an easy uh, night in the office and Mackenzie Dern did great man 29 28 same same scoring um, but Mackenzie Dern now her striking and she's worked on it go back and watch her first like two fights her striking is Ben Askren ish it's atrocious it's so bad we're like oh there's no way unless she gets her down or gets an ankle or something she's screwed now you're like okay striking is pretty damn good you can see the work she's putting in the discipline she's putting in they should do a before and after. A striking first fight to striking now, dude, the amount of work she must have put in to get to this level is wild. But again, that same work ethic that made her world famous, a world champion jiu-jitsu, she's adding to MMA. So that work ethic is going to take you pretty far. She's there, man. She's there. Straight up superstar. Superstar. Uh, Michael Chiesa beating Tony Ferguson. Tough, right? It's tough to see your guys, uh, some of these shit, you can call them a legend. Some of these legends, you know, go out like that. Um, I don't think it should be Tony's last one. Hear me out before you guys get mad. I don't think it should be his last one. I think what Tony's done for the UFC, his legacy, uh, it's a real shame the way things have ended for him. He should have been the the genuine one fit lightweight champion of the world, but when he was supposed to fight Khabib multiple times, that one time he blew his knee out, like walking down a, a you know on carpet, blew his knee out. So it never came to fruition. He was the interim champ, which you know that is what it is. It carries its own kind of weight, but it's just such a shame what happened to Tony Ferguson. And he's still one of the greats. I think it's like eight in a row. But what I would like, I don't know if Tony's down to do this, but I would like him to fight Nick Diaz. You do Tony, Nick Diaz, but going into it, knowing it's both their last fights, and you give them a right kind of send-off. You do the whole video montage, the whole celebration. We all know it's both of their last fights, and you 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 give you pay homage. You, you do the whole video, his whole career. That's the way Tony Ferguson should end his career. Not this way in Abu Dhabi. You do it in America. Maybe it's in California where he's from, right? Um, that's how you do it. You don't do an Abu Dhabi against Michael Kies that can choke down the first round. You do it in this battle with Nick, with Nick Diaz. It's back and forth. It's a fight, and we and you you do the Nick Diaz whole homage, the whole video. You do the Tony Ferguson, and it's just this big celebration of two of the greats. That's the way you do it. You don't do Nick Diaz versus Vicente Luque and watch him get destroyed. Right? We don't do that. That's not cool. Those guys, they've earned it. They deserve it. You make it in the main event on a f fight night even, or you have them as the third fight on, on the Connor card that's hopefully happening this year. Like you, you put them in a good spot. That third fight on the main card is always kind of, it's usually not for world champions. It's usually for either guys who you know are, are going to be there or it's this kind of fight. That's the way you do it. That's the way you send those two off. That's what you do. You just don't go, all right, we're good, Tony. And he, he he dropped one glove and was like, "Yeah, we'll see, man." Like this fan support, like oof. it's very Tony Ferguson. And then he, b before he even got to the freaking locker room, he's like, "I got one more in me." You're like, "Jesus Christ," you know. So I, I think you did it for Korean Zombie. They've done it for other fighters. Like you, you do it proper. That's the most proper way to do it. You do Nick Diaz, Tony Ferguson. Boom, call it a day. Stick a little break, kids, chatting all things fisticuffs. Because you know the great thing about being a sports fan, there's only like two days the whole year you're without a game or without a fight. Two, with so much happening and so much action, that makes just about every day game day at DraftKings Sportsbook. It's super easy for first-timers to get started. 
Try betting on something simple like picking a team to win. All right, go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, select your team, place your first bet. Really couldn't be any easier. It's that simple. All right, you can bet on the Dodgers. They're loaded. You bet on the freaking Yankees. They're loaded. You can bet on UFC, that horrible UFC fight night this week. You can bet on all sorts of fun stuff. Enhance the viewing experience when you got money on the game. There's nothing like it. And if you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet five and get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the code SHOPSHOW, S-C-H-A-U-B, SHOW. That's code SHOPSHOW for new customers to get 150 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just five buckaroos only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. See terms and responsible gaming resources at dkng.co slash base. My boy Cheeto. Oof. Tough, man. Tough. Uh, Figurito, this is what I would do. I mean, we'll get to the main event, but everyone's saying uh, Umar Nagamurdov versus um, the winner of Marab and Sugar. I'm not on that train yet. Can he beat both those guys? Yes. Great fight. Great freaking fight. Either one, Sugar or Marab, that both do take my money. He he's right there to beat Corey Sanhagen the way he did. Insane. 49 46, that's fine. 48 47 wouldn't be mad at cuz I'm from Denver, whatever. Um, but I I just don't think if you look at Umar's resume, he he made such a jump. The fight he won before this to Corey, he can beat the number three guy, no doubt. But to go from, uh, what was that, Al- Alcan? Almacan? That's a tough name. Tough one. Bexat Almacan. To go from that in the decision to Corey in the decision, I mean, beating Corey is insane. This is Bamweight title eliminator. I just, I, I would like more on his resume for you, a title shot. Look at the firestorm Sugar went through. Look what Marab has had to do. Look at what Aljo had to do in order to get that title shot. That division stacked, man. So I, I have a little problem. He beats one guy in the top five, one guy in the top 15. He doesn't have a top 15 win. This is his first top 15 win. I understand why they want to be champ. Slow your roll a tad. I, I would do Umar versus uh, Figueredo next. Because Figueredo... Former world champion, obviously different weight class, but still, he's on a three-fight winning streak. He's beat big names. He beat Cheeto, who's a savage, right? He beat uh, uh, Cody Garbrandt. He beat um, Font, Rob Font. Three big fucking wins. Look at that, dude. Look at that. Three big wins. Uh, and, and then uh, Figueroa beating Cheeto. Man, Cheeto, no punk, man. Cheeto's the man. Cheeto has a win over Sugar. No one's talking about it. That's a win, right? Um, for for Cheeto, he's one of those guys where we really don't care win or loss. You know, he's kind of in that Dustin Poirier lane where you're just like, yeah, hell yeah, that's my guy. He's beloved. Um, he's almost bigger than whatever ranking they want to give him. He's always one win away from a title shot. Even if the guy's not ranked in the top five, he gets a big knockout, like toss him in there, and we're like, yeah, that's cool. We're down for that. Poirier, one win, get him in there. Get him in there. So for, for Cheeto, it's tough, but he has to realize he should be so proud of his career, what he's done, you know. Um, he's always one win away. He has to go back to the drawing board. And he started to turn the tide a little bit, didn't he? Uh, I, I wish that fight was five rounds. That's a five-round fight. I truly believe uh, Cheeto beats Figueroa, but it just wasn't. Magomedov, uh, the Russian bullet. Is that what they call him, Russian bullet? Bullet. <clears throat> bullet. Redhead bullet. I don't trust redheads. Never have. But um, this guy's interesting, right? He can only fight in uh, Russia and Abu Dhabi and not in America. And people think it's similar to Hamza. It's not. 
the reason why you won't see uh, Magomedov fight in America, because remember, he, when he got this call, I think three weeks ago to take this fight, he's shooting a movie in America. So it's not a passport issue or a uh, weird political thing. It's because he has one eye. He won't get cleared in America. So it's not a Hamzat thing where it's this weird, dark, political you know, agenda. With Magomedov, it's literally he won't get cleared in America to fight. He has one eye. That's why. People are like, oh, I bet he can't fight here because his ties are none of that. He won't get cleared here because in America, and you have to have both eyes to fight. That's why. So, yeah, he can only fight in uh, outside America. That's why. Yeah, he comes here, makes money, does appearances, shoots movies, has nothing to do with anything, but he has one eye. He's compromised. You have to have both eyes, dude, to fight in America. It's just the way it is. I know, sticklers, but in order to fight, you have to have one eye, you know, unless you're a female born with the testicles, and then it's all good. But whatever, uh, different conversation. Um, so f for him, I think he's a fan favorite. We all love him. There's a ceiling because of his wrestling. Um, they could stop the hype really fast and give him Bo Nickel. But I don't, I think with a guy like Bullet, like let him be that guy. Let him be the entertaining guy with one eye, looks like a redheaded pirate and only fights in Abu Dhabi or the Middle East, you know, in Russia. Let, like let him be that guy and give him good, exciting matchups and he, you know, does his thing. But you, uh, the ceiling on him, like he's not, he's not a contender. So you're not you're never gonna have him as like main events or co main events against the the top ten top fifteen guys. It's just not it's not in the in the in the future for him. It's just not in the cards. He's just not that guy. He's not that guy. Savage. I love watching him. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He make a ton of money doing that. He'd never be world champ. It's just not happening. It's just what it is. That that's the way his story ends. Fun guy, makes a ton of money, beats a lot of tough guys, has one fucking eye, can only fight outside of America. That's him. Give him fun matchups. Cool. It is what it is. Um, and then f with the main event with Umar and Corey Sandahagen, obviously I'm biased, love Corey. But I just think Corey's such a breath of fresh air because in this world of TikTok dancing, the algorithm, and guys doing whatever they can to get traction, this guy is – getting traction off his fight IQ off being very cerebral and uh, it's refreshing. And also when he was on food truck, he was talking about fighting Umar fight, fight, talking about fighting guys. He's like, dude, I'm not one of those guys that just want to find the easiest route to the title shot. He goes, when I'm champ, I want to know I beat the best guys available, the toughest challenges. Unfortunately, Money wise, business wise, it's not the smartest choice, right? Because I'd rather fight Umar when he's champ and get paid a higher salary, and when I'm renegotiating my contract, be coming off a, a huge win streak and beat these huge names. Um, but it's just as far as personally, God, man, what what a savage! And the reason Umar, who's ranked I think eleven or ten, couldn't get a fight is nobody wanted to fight the guy. He's a savage, man absolute monster you look at marab and you look at sugar you're like yeah, i can see him beating him i can see him beating him and again that people want to talk umar's 10 right now so he'll jump up to probably two yeah he'll jump up to two i would assume two or three but he has to get a win over a guy like figurito uh peter yan or henry cejudo I bet you could get Henry to come out. Of, uh, I don't know if he's retired, but I bet you could get Henry to come out. Peter Jan would fight him, you know. But he he just needs one more staple win. I just don't feel comfortable with him having zero wins in the top fifteen, beating Corey, who's not known as a wrestler, and you beat him by decision, and then give him a title shot. I just it doesn't seem right to me. Look what Marab has done in order to get a title shot. Look at the firestorm Sugar went through. Here's what's interesting. This is what I love. What if Sugar Sean beats Marab, right? He's a slight underdog, but he can do it. What if Sugar beats Marab and then beat Umar? What? How insane would that be? 
remember the whole build up to Sugar. Oh, the UFC is just giving him perfect matchup because he's a star. He's big on Twitch. You know, he's he's not really world class, right? And then they give him Peter Yan. He beats Peter Yan. People are like Jesus. Okay, well, it's a striker. That's a perfect matchup. Aljo will get it done. He's fighting for a title there. It's your poster boy. Here's Aljo. Starches Aljo. And you're like, okay, well, Marab's going to be the guy. What if he starches Marab? Okay, Umar's the dude. He's the next starches uh, Umar. Eesh. Then what? That would be insane. That's why I root for Sugar. That'd be so dope. And he handled it so well. If you saw his live stream, he was live streaming during these fights. When Umar won, he goes, yeah, Corey Sandy is pound for pound one of the top guys. That's impressive. And he goes, I'd love to beat up a Dagestani just to shove it in Connor's face. Remember, he used to idolize Connor. And Connor went bad on him. So now he's just like, fuck it. It'd be dope to see Sugar take out all those guys. Tough to do. Tough to do. He would be a dog in the, he, he is a dog in the Marab fight, and he'll be a dog in the Umar fight. Umar, so I, now I'm not saying Umar's not the best bantamweight in the world. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there's an order. That's all I'm saying. Look at what Marab went through, Aljo went through, Peter Yan went through, Sugar went through. For him just to be have one win in the top 15 and fight for the title, nah, man, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Even Alex Pierre, they, they shot him to the top. Look at who he fought, though. Tough matchups, man. Tough matchups. He's beat the who's who in, in the division to, to get that crown. So for Umar, I would just like, and, and to get the fan base on board with him. How many people watch the Abu Dhabi card? Middle of the day, people are busy, you know? Corey Sanning, not the biggest name. Hardcores, we know we love Corey. We know how fucking talented Corey is. For Umar, you got to get a, a Henry Cejudo to be massive. And if you do want him to be your champ, you, Henry Cejudo is a household name. Have him fight Henry Cejudo. Have him fight a Peter Yan. People know Peter Yan. Have him fight one of those guys. Figueroa, former champ, three fight winning streak. Beat some big boys, big names, ranked guys. Have him fight Figueroa. But to launch him in the title shot, eef, I don't like it. I don't like it. And you know, Umar, he's not related by blood to Khabib. We know this, right? No. I he's just he, a friend. I thought he was a cousin. No. They say that. Mm. You know, black guys are like, that's my cousin. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you, ever, you have any black friends like, that's my cousin. And where I come from as a white dude, I'm like, oh, that's, then they're, they're blood. No, no, no. Nope. No, no. So online it says younger cousin, but I don't know the actual true details. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. He's not blood. And he's interesting too because his his background, similar to his beat, it's always weird when you see a Dagestani whose background's not wrestling. His background's striking. And he picked he went striking first, mastered that, and then went to grappling. I'm almost positive he's not blood blood related. This one says they're not brothers, but they're cousins. I don't think so, man. <laughs> okay, we could figure it out later. But yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Fake news. Fake news. But for the UFC, like, I've, and I keep saying this, look at the numbers. The growth in America is here. We've reached the ceiling. It's not going to get any bigger here. So the UFC's whole business plan now is international. So you look at all the guys that are international superstars. Americans are going to do their thing, right? We're always going to do well. But for them to get even bigger, they, they it's all about international. So, yeah, you put guys like this up front, you know? He even goes by the nickname Young Eagle. Okay. Okay. They're not blood, though. So there's another Namagamadov that people think was his cousin or related, but it's not. So this guy. Said uh, Siad, I think. Nurmagomedov, yeah. I think that Nurmagomedov is like Silva in Brazil. You know what I'm saying? Or Garcia as a Mexican. 
Anywho. Shit, if I was him, I'd call my cousin too. It's good marketing. The next coming of, you know, the young eagle. I see that birth certificate, dog. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, great card. Better than this weekend's card. Jesus Christ. Who asked for this? I'll take it, though. I'll watch it. <laughs> this card's disgusting. Disgusting. But like they, I said, you're just edging us to edging, the big yeah. pay-per-view. Yeah, Izzy and DDP. Mm -hmm. That card's solid. Go to that card. The big pay-per-view. This one? Yeah, let me see the whole card. Kai Kara France, Steve Ursig. Gamrot, Dan Hooker's a fun one. Taito Vasa, Rosenstruck. See, see, that's third on the main card. That's a, yeah, that's what you put a fun one on that's going to finish fast. Your boy, the leech is back. Mm -hmm. Tafa, Walker. Casey O'Neill, she's fun to watch. She's fun. Jack Jenkins, fun. Not going to blow your shocks off. But the top ones are great. Um, the, the, the main event's great. Mm. Outside that, it's a little dicey. Super dicey. Let's take another little break, and then we get right back into the chat. All right? This is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. That's right. Shop Show is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Let's face it. Insurance can be overwhelming. You don't want to deal with it. Well, what if I told you that Progressive makes it super, super easy. Getting a quote from Progressive Insurance is so dang easy. They take all the hard work out of it, all right? Because with their easy comparison tool, you need to try it. They compare rates so you can find a great rate anytime you need, all right? Because you deserve it. It's easy. All you need to do is visit Progressive's website to get a quote with all the coverages you want, the like comprehensive collision coverage, personal injury protection. Then you'll see Progressive direct rate, their tool will provide options from other companies all lined up, ready to compare, so it's simple to choose the rate and coverages you like. Press play on comparing auto rates. Quote at Progressive.com to join over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Progressive Insurance. This episode of The Shop Show is also brought to you by OO O'Reilly Auto Parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts offers friendly, helpful service and parts knowledge you need for all your maintenance repairs. All right. Sometimes it can be tricky. You don't know what to do. Maybe your headlights out. Maybe you got a check engine light. You need to figure this out. Maybe you got a 20-year-old Ford F-150 that has all sorts of freaking problems nonstop. And you bought a lemon. It was a complete money pit. And you're kicking yourself for buying the car. Maybe you're that guy. Maybe you're me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe O'Reilly Auto Parts has a ton of stuff to actually help you figure it out. And they have the right team who's super friendly, helpful. So whether you're a car expert or a rookie, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are super helpful. I know this from experience. My boy Casey at O'Reilly here in the Valley is fantastic. All right. Professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself. And you can find what you need in store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Visit them at O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. All right. What do you got, Jen? Also over the weekend, one championship, our boy Jared Brooks won. Yeah, yeah. monkey god. Got yeah. it done. Submission rear choke first round. The boy. Yeah. Fam checked out. We ha he fancied himself a rapper in his uh, off time, so we had him compete against the best white rapper I know, not named Mac Miller, rest in peace, but uh, Little Browse. It was fun. Yeah. He's a fun kid, mm -hmm. fun dude, talented as all get out. Daniel Kelly lost. I know. Ain't that a bitch? That's our girl. Yeah. Um, another quick one. Terrence Crawford also fought over the weekend, and now he became a four division uh, champion in boxing. Tougher fight than they thought, huh? Yeah, I'm, one of my friends that's super into boxing said it was like pretty close. So yeah, yeah. way tougher fight than he thought, and it stops his uh, streak of uh, finishes. But good for him. There you go. Have you seen Four division champion? Jesus. Yeah, the WBA. WBA. Uh, so we talked about this last week, I believe, when the antitrust lawsuit, the judge rejected the settlement, right? So then uh, Dana White had an interview with. Uh, Kevin Ioli and said like there's something more into it. There probably is. 
him and Lorenzo went to the same high school as this person, and he's wondering if maybe they pissed him off or something, and then it, it's becoming this now. I'm sure it is. Let me say this. It's probably the only thing I've said this whole thing's been going on. Yeah, it's weird he hasn't said anything about it. It's getting to the point now where this feels personal. I went to high school with the judge. Me and Lorenzo went to high school with him. I don't know what the hell me or Lorenzo did to him in high school, but this seems very, very personal. I'm sure there's part of that. I don't. So think yeah, I, Kevin, I only asked, like, did you, did you like? <laughs> yeah, I don't him think I bullied him. I don't think I did anything to the guy. I don't know what the hell happened, but there's no doubt in my mind this feels absolutely personal. And whatever it is with this guy, we'll let the lawyers deal with it. It is what it is. It's tough, right? Maybe maybe, maybe it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone wants to jump on and make it an easy one word answer, but maybe it's a combination of both. Maybe it's a combination where. You know, is three hundred whatever it is three hundred thirty five million for this yep. antitrust lawsuit payout settlement worth it? Seems pretty low. Um, and this judge knows Dana personally, and so there's it's probably both. He's probably like, nah, that ain't fair. Also, that guy was a dick in high school. <laughs> it's probably both. It could be both. Yeah. yeah. All it's good. Possible. Yeah. All good. That's how it goes. All right, next one. This okay. I don't want to say this word because it just sounds too close to, to another word. But Leon Edwards' coach said that um, his back was hurt. I'll help you out. Yeah, and then the the word is. I'll just spell it. He said that uh, he had a n i g g l e. This is my um, favorite. I'm not making excuses up for him, but mm -hmm. I hate when they do this. Okay. Okay. You think? I'll ask you this. You think Bilal was 100 percent? Can't no, tell you it's not. No, yeah. no, no. None of this ever helps. None of this helps. No, I hate when they do this. No, no, just give him his flowers. You got beat by the better man. You're going to come back. You're going to beat Ian uh, Gary and then fight again for the top. That's it. The better man won. Stop it. His back. Oh, he couldn't sleep. Leon Edwards hi hired an F1 team because, you know, F1 drivers drive all over the world. So they got to get their sleep schedules on point. Mm -hmm. So they have F1 like sleep experts. And Leon, which, you know, it's massive in England, F1. Leon hired an F1 team to help him navigate and to sleep better, which is weird because you're from there. You fought in America many of times, whatever. But he hired an F1 coach to help him sleep. Bilal was like, oh, I just bought one of those sound machines off of Amazon. <laughs> Savage. Yeah, there's a lot of – I hate when the guys start making excuses. I mean, I, and I plus it's it. his coach. It's not even him, so that kind oh, of sucks even too. Even worse. You know? Even worse. Uh, okay, so there's more details with this Mohamed Mokayev stuff, right? Remember, like Dana White said at a press conference that, you know, he's good to go, even though he's on a, you know, whatever, 37 combined amateur yeah, pro amateur, fighting yeah. straight. Still 37 either yeah, way. Paint, it's impressive. But, uh, yeah, so Mok – He's been touted as like the next guy in, you know, especially in England, forever. Like he's the man. Mm. I mean, his record is, you know, incredible. Even though he might be a little bit boring, but uh, anyway. So um, Dana White, in, you know, insinuated that he was going to go with the PFL, and the PFL has a great undefeated fighter now, right? Well, no, he, but the, but all this doesn't make sense. Like PFL doesn't even have that weight division. They don't have one twenty five, and no one really has one twenty five. Ray Seffo even said himself like. Um, no, we don't want him. I heard he's like a pain in the Ray ass. Ray Seppel first said, who? Yeah. In the like, oh, no. So with uh, Magomeda, what, M Mokayev, what, he fucked up, dude. This is your only lane to work in. And it's the biggest promotion in the world. And you're super difficult to work with. And there's some other sh stuff I've heard. So it's like, what, how do you think this is going to end, dude? And also, it's at 125. The UFC's never made mon money at 125. It's they have DJ. One who's the most famous 125-er ever. They couldn't make money off him. So for him to think he has any sort of leverage, the UFC's like, yeah, but I'm 37. I'm like, we don't give a fuck, dude. Take your shit and go somewhere else. Here's the problem. Now, if he was a heavyweight, a middleweight, a 155 or 170, there's a lot of other places you can go. 125, you kind of fucked, shot yourself in the foot, dude. Hashtag no Meg the Stallion. You kind of shot yourself in the foot, you know? Like, there's not, what are you going to do now? And he probably got done, right? He did all this. So I guess it's not a big deal. Had a horrible fight. UFC's like, we're good. And he's like, I will just go somewhere else. And his manager's like, where though? Where are we going to go? Well, I mean, he's apologizing big time. And he's saying, over, this is also on his, uh, 
on his ex, his Twitter. He's saying this that is the first time I punched outside the cage. It was more personal. He was the one who had uh five days before the Perez fight when I went to shake his hand in Manoka. Vegas. I understand this is wrong. What happened at the hotel? I apologize to the UFC, but there's some nights I didn't sleep because someone treated me like that. I've never been cheap shot on the streets. I will never let anyone bully me. I never bullied anyone, but whatever happened, it happened. I don't want to keep going about it, but I will take big lesson from it. And then he, um, Tim Simpson, who's oh, great, <laughs> uh, but uh, tells me the rumor flowing around the UFC exit was brought on by negotiating with PFL while still under counter completely false. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they don't have the 125 division. It makes no sense. And this is the latest thing. Yes, Hunter, Hunter Campbell to fight for free in his next fight. I was saying he's learned his lesson and wants to come back to the UFC. He doesn't, he's like, that's his home. That's where he wants to, you know, be fighting forever. And he's begging them. So he's saying, like, I'll do a fight for free if you take me back. Ah, see, I'd take him back. Hmm? I'd take him back. Yeah, I think if they both did a stupid thing where they both cheap shot at each other, then it's more than that. I know. There has to be more, it's more underlying than stuff, but yeah. And all the outcry from like, this is ridiculous, UFC, this is so bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Really? Do you know the whole story? No, you don't. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. And you think the UFC is just going to let a kid who's 37-0 just walk off, walk away? No, there's more to the story. There's got to be. You give him a little, little credit here. That, um, the, his, problem, his problem is, A, he's difficult to work with. Right, he's, he's he's kind of tough with the UFC staff. That's a huge issue. The UFC doesn't tolerate. B, he's 125 pounds. That's probably the UFC's biggest like, thing, right? Yeah. And he had that horrible fight. He had the you know the sucker punch guy. The UFC's like, yeah, we want to get rid of 125. Anyway, he's difficult. Get him out of here. And he doesn't sell tickets. Bud, you should be the nicest guy in that on that fucking roster. Also, where again, where are you gonna go? Dude, PFL doesn't want to take him. Ugh. See, yeah. the PFL don't want to take that doesn't work. PFL doesn't have a 125 pound division. I got you. But I'm saying that's the other organization that bought Bellator. It doesn't make sense. Second one. You might as well go to the WNBA. They don't have a 125 <laughs> division. So when people go, yeah. PFL won't take him. They don't have the fucking division to take him. That does it's never made sense. If he was heavyweight and was like, I'm going to go to PFL, then if a PFL goes, we don't want him, that's, that's how that would work there. We don't want him. When you don't have the division, it doesn't make sense. I mean, okay, so. You go to one? one. Yeah, one for sure. Um, but if, P, if he did go to PFL, if, if that was, he would just have to go up and wait then, which would be a bitch, but, you know. Be tough, yeah. He's a, he's a stud though. That's well, yeah, thing. and he he's really feels sorry. Stud. He and I th I'm pretty sure that I, I heard heard something or read something where Tom Aspinall's like really good, like close with yeah. him, and he like he, he's 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 like super bummed yeah, out. Yeah, don't get it died. twisted. Even though his name's Mohammed uh, Makayev, he's he's he, he's a British fighter. Like he's he's not very well received in Dagestan and Russia. It's, he didn't come up mm. there. He came up in London. His fan base is in London, he, but at 125, you know, it's all relative. But the majority of his support is London. It's not across the way there in Dagestan and Russia. Like he's not selling those out. He's not a well-known guy over there. He's not walking the streets and getting bombarded by fans over there. All right. Well, there's that. And uh, speaking of Aspinall, this was about like five days ago, whatever, the odds of – potential matchup between John Jones and Aspinall. Aspinall's favored now, whereas last year I believe John Jones would be would have been favored. Minus yeah. 150. So like it says that. now it's not a huge favorite, but it's kind of crazy that last year J Jones was a minus 200 favorite. It's cuz most of the flopped. Guys making his bet don't know fucking fighting. <laughs> All right. Um, and Steve, I think our video got to Steve Bay because he's. Uh, I'm sorry to Aspinall. Oh. I think the video got to Aspinall a little bit because he's he's saying now like yeah, I'm the best. I beat both in the same night. I'm like there you go. Mm. Nice guys finish last, man. We're looking for big boy matchups. Um, so Ilya Tapuria versus Max Holloway is the title fight that headlines UFC 308 in Abu Dhabi. They yanked it from Salt Lake City, 
And then here's like but the Max, so Max far. and Tapura are, are way happier. That's in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Probably because elevation over there in uh, Utah, it's kind of a bitch. Um, but look mm. at look at what they're doing for Abu Dhabi. I mean, they're stacking it, man. So they yeah they figure it bought. out. That's their priority. Figure it fucking out. I keep telling you guys, the ceiling in America, across the board, is it, they've reached it. It, it. They've already and it's big. I'm not saying it's small. They it's here. In order for them to to get growth and get be for the company worth more money. They, their whole, all their peepers are international. Look at the Abu Dhabi cards. They're fucking sad. Amazing, yeah. Beastie cards. Beastie. So they re rebooked Hamzat versus Robert here. And it's five rounds. Dude, here's the thing. If Hamzat doesn't fight Robert Whitaker at UFC 308, it's over. If he, if he doesn't show up for this one, it's over. <laughs> And I'm a huge Hamzat fan. He's, yeah, he's one of my favorite fighters to watch. I, I think he's going to have a very tough time with Robert Whitaker. All I'm going to say, though, is if he misses this one, it's over. Enough's enough. It's over. And bookies even say that they're like they, they won't they're betting the on that. He, yeah, he's, he's going to withdraw. They're wow. betting that. Yeah. If he would, for whatever, I don't give a fuck what the reason is. I don't, it could not be his fault. He's on his way to the arena. The bus gets blown up. The wheels fall off. I don't give a fuck what it is. For whatever reason, even if it's not his fault, if he were to miss weight, if he doesn't make it to that cage, his career in the UFC is over. It's over. He has to take this fight or it's over. And this I one's he, also- I think he's going to have a tough time with Robert Whitaker. Of, dude, Robert's the, sh the, the shit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this one's also kind of intriguing because Magomed Ankalaev, he's he's basically the person that should be fighting, you know, Alex. No, he's the Marab of the light heavyweight. Yeah. He's the Marab. That, there's like, uh, here's Rakic. He's like, what? He's yep. coming off a He's fighting Rakic. Like, Rackick, yeah, yeah, we know. Fight Rakic. He's like, oh, I thought I was getting a title shot. Though. Nah. It's the way it works, dude. I But also, as a business, with the UFC, the matchmakers, I get it. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to have that guy be your... You're, and he, he's a stylistically tough matchup for your biggest star in the UFC. Okay. Come on, Rackett. That's what the <laughs> Rackett. Come on, dude. We don't pick favorites, but Rackett, come on, you know, come on. Let's go, bud. Well, they both accepted the fight. So, so I, I wonder what, fighting again. Yeah. I wonder what's going to happen with Alex, but it's exciting. Uh, you, you, oh, oh, with Pierre. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do it this because uh, that should have been his next fight, but it's not going to be. Of course, so. it should. No, and you know why. We all <laughs> yeah. know why. But also, Salt Lake City needs a main event. Okay. There's no main event. The main event, they lost their main event. Salt Lake City. Pay-per-view. It was supposed to be Max Holloway and Topuria. Oh, I bet they moved. Okay. Yeah, so that's gone. So there's no main event there. That card is not tasty right now. You need a main event. They usually do pretty good main events in Salt Lake City. Alex is like, oh, God, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do I it. Guess anybody too. But them line up uh, Ankalaev for a fight with Rakic, that means they got some tasty for Alex. Or Alex is like, dude, I need a fucking break. Like, all right, what? Because I'm sure... And Kaliev wants to fight. He doesn't find a second. And they're like, Alex ain't fighting probably to December, dude. He's like, all right, give me something. Oh, man. I mean, there's some good fights on here, but. The the cards for a fight night, yeah, it's yeah. the best fight night ever. For a pay-per-view, you need that main event. Yeah. But these are, cool. okay, Kayla Harrison versus Great Caitlin fight. Vera. Great fight. Carl, okay, Carlos Barza, I know that she said that's going to be her retirement fight. Cool. So I'll take it. Done. Jose Aldo, very <laughs> tough fight for him against Batista. Awful fight for him. Chris Curtis, Kevin Holland. That's Great a fight. fun one. Yep. Sierra Almeida. Uh, all right. Marina Rodriguez. Mm. Mozart and uh, Aljamain. That's Great a great fight. fight as well. Raquel Penton. Pena. Like that's a fun one. I don't know why Kayla's not fighting uh, Pena, but whatever. Harrison Pena is your main event. The fuck are we doing? Come on. You want to pretend Kayla's not the best band weight walk in the planet? Okay. But since Raquel is now the champion, I guess 
that's what they got to do first. Sure. And they put them on the same card, so that makes sense. Kayla's going to dominate, get on the mic, yep, lines it up. Oh, also on the 308 card that was just announced today, Rafael Dos Anjos versus Jeff Neal. That's a fun one. Hmm? Yeah, 308 stacked. Um, here's another few <laughs> bout announcements. Uh, this is kind of like, this is low key a great this fight. It's a great fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, definitely. Well, yeah, kind of like fight. that, Jin. I'm just saying, Brandon Roy Val versus Tatsuro. Great Tyra. fight. And Tatsuro is fight. undefeated. Yeah. He's that a, has Five Night written all over it. That's a fucking phenomenal fight. Um, we already saw this. Saw that already. Saw that already. Oh, so this is from one championship that just happened. Oh, is this that knockout? Dude, it Ooh. was such a it's a crazy one. Hold on, let me put some sound. Give me one sec. Boom. Dude against the dude in the Olympics. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's Amy Pierney. Dude, that's a bad knockout. Yeah, it's a pretty crazy one. Let's take a little break. The summer is still here. It's winding down. All right. Summer ball is winding down. All right. But that little league keeps popping. You got big fights. You got barbecues and you're drinking, man. And you're like, man, I'm drinking a lot. I'm waking up. I'm hungover. I don't feel right. I was supposed to take the kids somewhere, but I'm just not feeling up to myself these days. Well, I got something for you. What if I told you there was a product, I'm talking about Safety Shot, the world's first alcoholic detoxifier that reduces blood alcohol content in as little as 30 freaking minutes. When you drink it, dude, sharper mind and body, liver support, well-being boost, gut support, hydration. When you're drinking, you need hydration. It's so important so you don't feel all hungover, so you're not all groggy around the kiddos, so you're still shouting at your eight-year-old who missed a pop fly, all right? Do it with a little energy, dad. So go ahead and have that one drink. All right. Have that one extra drink on me because now you got sh safety shot. All right. So drink safety shot.com. Use the promo code Brendan. You get 10% off a four pack, whatever you're looking for. Bring it for the boys. Bring it for the fam. We got you. Drink safety shot.com. Promo code Brendan. Get 10% off. Um, what do you think of this? Because I know you love Ta Tatiana Suarez as a fighter. Uh, Mackenzie Duran is wanting to fight her next. Two of my faves going at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, who? Do you, I. I <laughs> what do you just like forcing me to choose between a Dodge Demon and a Corvette ZR1. I just, I honestly think I, I love Mackenzie as well, but I think Tatiana would, would just go to town. Let me ask you this, Jen. Yeah. How would she go to town? Wrestling. Wrestling? And you I know she can caught in a submission. I know. So, so the, to, by far, uh, see, I think Suarez can be your next champ, and then you give Mackenzie during the. The title shot. Um, she's just spend how much time on the ground with Mackenzie Dern? And you guys know, I've been, name someone who's been champion. Tatiana Suarez more than me. I think she is the Khabib of female. Mm. Fucking savage. But if you tell me that championship fight against Mackenzie Dern is going to be 25 minutes on the ground and she's just shooting for takedowns, dude. That's the best fight in female fighting by far they could make. Not even close. That's wild. Because Tatia and I would and Mackenzie has an advantage on the feet. Well, yeah. So I think you know Tatiana's going to be shooting and ground and pounding. Sure. Twenty five minutes with Mackenzie Dern on the ground. Tough task. Such a good fight. Yeah. At the highest level. So fucking good. It's like Umar and Corey this weekend. If you didn't watch them, like, holy shit. It was so high level. That was so entertaining to me. Two of the very best, just this puzzle piece, just figure it's a chess match. Oh, if you don't like that, probably voting for Kamala Harris. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you stupid. But Mackenzie Dern for Tatiana Suarez, Dude, that is by far the best female fight in a hot fucking second. World-class wrestler, world-class jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. It goes on the ground. Take my fucking money. That can't be a fight. Now you put that on pay-per-view. 
and Mackenzie teaming and up. And don't make me choose, Jen. I know what you're doing, dude. <laughs> I know. When it gets closer, you're going <laughs> to nope. probably have to. No, nope, not going to choose. All right. But yeah, but uh, Mackenzie teaming up with Perillo again, that, that's it's, it's awesome. Everything. Yeah. And should we know that Corey left, Corey Sanhagen left, my boy Christian Allen went with my other boy Trevor Whitman. Oh. Hey, yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Mm. Yeah, you're not hardcore. <laughs> You know them actually personally, <laughs> but damn, okay, yeah. First fight without Christian Allen. Again, I don't. Uh, Trevor's amazing, and Christian Allen's amazing. I don't know what happened there, but um, I, it's, I, I don't think you say, oh, because he switched camps. It's like Umar's fucking good, dude. And with Umar, and especially with a guy like Corey, like Umar's gonna be that guy where Marab's gonna be. A Tough fight because he doesn't have the capabilities in his hands or the the submissions to do it. Sugar does. You're not going to beat a guy like Umar trying to outpoint him in five rounds. He's going to win every single time. You have to have that one shot knockout power. You're going to have to take some chances. You're going to get taken down. You you gotta you gotta go for broke against him to beat that guy. You're not going to beat him in decision. It's not happening. And Corey need to get a little more reckless. He's just such a cerebral fighter. Yeah. It's tough for him to get out of that cerebral, technical. His fundamentals are so good. He's so technical. We need a little bit of a wild boy to beat Umar. You're not going to outclass him. You're just not. He's too good. We need that wild boy. Sugar's a wild boy. Sugar has that one-shot knockout power. You know, you need that wild boy. Mm-hmm. Him, him versus Marab could be so boring. I'm not saying it is. It has the high potential to be fucking boring. High level, but tough. So could, you're, I'm guessing you're saying that Marab's just going to hold him on the ground? He's going to try. Yeah. He's going to try. And and then maybe homeboy Umar gets to his feet and his striking's a lot better than Marab's. You know? Marab's, Marab's striking's a, a liability, man. But what he does, you know, with the takedowns and his cardio, second to none. Cardio is insane. The other, the other question on Umar is five rounds of that pace, you know, with the takedowns and the striking. Like, you know, Corey was able to get to his feet. He would give up his back, which worked to style, get in hand fight, get back to his feet. Um, I just have some question about Umar. That's all I'm saying. Like at a le- at, at the and I don't think we'll see the cardio. Uh, if we were to fight Sugar, he'll be able to do his thing, you know. And but with a, a Marab, you're you're gonna get tested cardio wise. How does he look with that? I'm not saying he do- can't do it. We just don't know. He hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been tested like that. That's why I'm not ready to give him the title shot yet. But I don't work for the UFC. They're probably gonna give it to him. Kenzie Dern, Tatiana Suarez, take my money. Yeah. Fuck, that's a great fight. This is pretty cool. This uh, came out on ESPN MMA. This is great. So you saw this, right? So Tom Aspinall, he basically quit MMA around 10 years ago to pursue boxing because he was not, wasn't making money. He was not getting fights and not making money. And then now he's like one of the best heavyweights in the world. Well, the best, Jen. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's, two, there's two heavyweights right now. Say it. One Do I? That- do One. I think Tom wins against John Jones? I do. Yes. Yeah. He's the best heavyweight walk on the planet. But he's not the GOAT. Not saying that. I'm saying currently right now, one's in the prime, one's older, and we have one piece of evidence to go off the Cyril Gon fight. The other guy's beaten the best of the best and starching him. Come on. Doesn't mean I don't like John Jones. Doesn't mean I, he's not my GOAT. I've been harping that he's the number one by far goat of all time. There's no comparison. But right at heavyweight right now, Tom's better. We've been over this. Yeah, this, how how dope is this? Yeah, in this, if you play the interview, Tom's mm-hmm. basically he, he's younger. Yeah, Look at him. It's not my first day of, That's Tommy Fury next to him. Boring, but it's my first day that I've decided oh, to focus solely on boxing. But uh, it's time to learn the trade now. I've been doing MMA for a long time. I've been struggling to make it pay financially and just not getting many rewards from it because. I'm struggling to get fights, so it's time to uh, switch over and do the boxing. I've gelled with Peter well. Uh, my MMA coach, Colin, has uh, taught me a lot when it comes to boxing, but it's time to learn just the art of boxing now, so first day switched over. Whether you 
Tommy next one's like, yeah, my brother's the world champion. I'm going to go on a reality <laughs> show and get super tan. That's crazy. Thank God he didn't pursue boxing. Yeah, he's so good at freaking MMA, so, yep. Um, That's it for current events. I don't know how much you want to talk about this. Not much, card. dude. <laughs> I'm going to put that for in that the UFC does. That card's fucking, this is a card nobody asked for. I'll watch it, though. All right. Is that it, Chin? That should be it. You know, Jake Paul saw Tony first. He's like, coming out or coming out of retirement or. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> what's Tony do? They don't give him that legendary fight against Nick Diaz. UFC, and if the UFC, the UFC is not going to give him another one, his team's going to have to push for that. Otherwise, they're just not going to let him fight. The UFC's done with him. But the, the Nick Diaz, we can sell that. It's going to get views. You also kind of owe it to him. Give him the right you know, homage and play the whole sizzle. Like the fans would love that. Him and Nick Diaz, people would go nuts. Nuts. So I was, talking to, card. I was talking to Casey earlier about this because Casey's like, why did he put one glove down? And I was wondering, if he put both gloves down, would they have something already ready to go for him? You know what I'm saying? No. I don't think that's a I – th I bet they're like, Tony's crazy. He keeps saying he's going to fight again. Mm. It's also weird to do it in Abu Dhabi because MMA's royalty, kind of, especially at this scale, is new there. So the fans are like, oh, yeah. You got to do it here. You do it in California. You know, you do it right. Nick Diaz is from here. It's a no-brainer. Fans would love it. But say the UFC doesn't. They're like, no, you're done, man. Or they cut him. Let's say by the time we're doing the show, we get out of here and we find out he's cut. They're like, ah, we're not, you know, no more fights for Tony. He's done. Which, if he doesn't take Nick Diaz fight, that's probably what's going to happen. If they don't, I, I shouldn't even say if he takes the Nick Diaz fight. If they don't offer that, they're not mm -hmm. going to offer him anything. He's going to have to pitch them on it. It should be, I don't know whose management is such an easy fucking pitch. He just, he's like, yeah, we can make money off that. It makes us look good too. Like, we care about him. Let's do it. And plus, he But if you don't do that, bare knuckles probably in your future. Oh my God, that'd be terrible. Mm -hmm. But I mean, so at least in this fight, he wasn't like destroyed for five rounds. It was a pretty quick finish. So. I do feel like him and Diaz would probably be the best option. That's hard. He, he's not, yeah, he's not like that damaged from this particular fight. No, and, Nick, and Nick's too. not like some dude that's going to just knock him unconscious. Like if he beats him, it's going to be submission or volume. Oh, yeah. Like it's a, it just makes all the sense in the world. Why not do it? What you don't fucking do is have that his last fight after all the fights he's given the UFC, beloved by fans. Nick Diaz, what you don't do is he's been out for a hot second. He even trained for his last fight, they said, and then obviously lost. What you don't do is just cut Tony and then give a guy like Nick Diaz Vicente Luque. Come on, man. Who's steering the ship? Yep. Well, his manager should be calling this today, right now. Listen, we know, we know, we know. Tony, we're not trying to hear it. Hold on, just hear me out. Tony, Nick. Don't have to be soon. I know you guys are swamped on cards. Whatever you want to do. The fans will love it. You do a whole video for both of them. We go into the fight saying it's our last fight. You guys pay the respect. We pay our respect. And we ride off in the sunset. Okay. Down with that. That's it. His management should be on them, the horn, right? If not after Abu Dhabi, but right fucking now. We're not saying you don't have to do it the next month, two months, three months. All good. End of the year would be great. Early next year. Find something that works. This is the right thing to do. If your management's not doing that for you, you need different management. Because I'm a dumbass. I came up with this. What else you got, Jen? Is that, that it? That's it. I got one question for you. Yeah. Uh, we briefly talked about the Suga and Connor beef, but let's say Suga like, wins at Noche and calls out Connor. Is that in the realm of possibility? No, and not unless Suga's down to fight at 70. Connor's never making 45 ever again or on this 55. fucking earth. 55 would be tough too. Have to be at 70. I tell you, but have you seen the videos like circulating online of Connor? It's like, I don't know if we can get him to fight anymore. He's like some biker rally, just looking like a fucking Irish Hells Angel. Yeah, and he got like a two year ban from driving. Did you see that? Yeah. 
about to, whatever. <laughs> that sucks. But when in, in, I just in, mean, is it in Ireland? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, you see the videos. I'm like, yeah, oh, man, I don't know if it's we're just gonna, like little things added. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna get this. Fine. Yeah. I, I don't know. Dana's not really commenting on it either. It's not good. Gregor loses life. Define driving dangerous. Fast. Yeah, that'll do it. Go Nearly avoids jail. Car. Incident shit almost, yeah, two years ago. Damn, well. Good thing he has money to have drivers. Yeah, but you have those many, that many awesome cars you want to drive them, but just don't sip too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, but the, you're not getting a sugar, Connor, unless it's just too much, too oh. many vi- variables, you know? Ran a red light and sped through traffic, nearly causing a collision. Yeah, that's trouble. Yeah. This isn't Bad Boys 3, Connor. You got to slow down, dude. Bad stuff. But no, in regards to your question, sugar, it's too, it's too much of a weight discrepancy. Great fight. Is that it, boys? That is it. All right, kids. Thanks for liking. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, do all the things. There's less than three weeks left. I'm giving away that badass Raptor R killer. Um, boy, we are cooking. I can't thank you guys enough. Everybody that bought merch. But there's less than three weeks left. August 31st, this thing ends. The winner will be announced right away. And then we fly out here, man. It's going to be a fun one. Whoever gets this truck is going to be stoked. So go to drivefastallgas.com. It ends August 31st. A few days after that, we will... Uh, I don't get to select the winner. We have to hire a third party to do that. I have no control. But uh, it'll be announced, man. It should be a fun one. So go to drivefastallgas.com. Pick up some merch. Get entered to win the truck. It's that easy. Ends August 31st, less than three freaking weeks. Can't wait, man. Sick of promoting this truck, if I'm being honest. Sick of this goddamn red truck, okay? <laughs> what have I learned? I've learned not to do seven weeks of promotion. I've learned I bet I could knock this out in three to four weeks. And the fans would enjoy it much more because you get instant gratification instead of seven weeks. I'm exhausted talking about this goddamn truck. Truck's awesome, though. Truck is fantastic, (laughs) and I'll tell you all about it. (laughs) Drivefastallgas.com. Love you guys.